Hi everyone. So I have here in front of you some of the things I'm going to be working on soon. This right here is a, another FujiNet which I'll be re reviewing and posting on all things ColecoVision. This right here is a system I call the Max. Why am I calling it the Max? Why not? It's got the original look of the ColecoVision prototype right here. What's going to be different about this besides the fact that I pulled out the video RAM that was in there, replaced it with new video RAM so it doesn't need minus 12 volts or minus 5 volts anymore. It also has RGB output and HDMI output as well as the original RF output. This is going to be power output just for the roller controller because there's going to be one more hole put in probably right around here somewhere, maybe over here, where you plug in an external power supply. No more wall warts, no more big monsters. You're gonna, this is getting modernized. And, 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 and the last thing that's going in the max here, it's gonna have a super game module adapter work alike inside of it, which means that no more will you have to plug anything in here. This may not even open up when I get done for all I know. I'm not worried about using the Atari emulator, the expansion module one on it because I don't use that. So that's the max I'm building. This is just for my own personal benefits, though. I may do some more later for people. This right here is two Adams, one mine on the bottom, and one a Retro Gamers Club member, Adam, and he sent that to me. And what we're going to be doing this over the next couple of weeks, and I'm going to video the whole process is each one of these Adams is getting one, an internal power supply built into it, so no more printer on and off switch on the outside. Two is getting an ADE. Adam disk emulator mounted internally right here in the empty bay. Three, it's getting the super game module patch repair done to it so that you can hear the sound of the super game module. And four, at least, last but not least, on the back here, there's a little empty spot right here. Probably right there's a good spot for it. It's going to have HDMI output, so you can just plug this thing directly into an HDMI system or a screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to be upgrading these atoms so that they're like super atoms. But those are two systems I'm going to be working on. I'll be videoing them and I'll be putting them online. So that's what I got going here hardware wise. I got some other, other hardware wise things going but this is what I'm working on right now hardware wise. Video games. We have Desolator out. Uh, Desolator is going slow in the sales and I was debating is it the price? And or is it the fact that it needs a super game module? It's definitely not the game because the game is awesome. And I've decided, you know what, I'm just going to leave the price as is. If it's sales are slow right now, sales are slow right now. They'll pick up later. They ain't going nowhere. If it's a super game module, well, that's something I can't do anything about yet. Demon Attack slash New Atlantis almost sold out. Eh, I got about 15 copies left. Hopefully that lasts to the shows, which start next month. I'll get to that soon. Other games, the last 10 or thereabouts of Crazy Climber, and I'm never making another one, is they're available in the store. Um, the last 15 or so of Turmoil 2022 for the Clico Mission is in the store. Um, 10 of the Turmoil 2022 slash Oh Shit Pipes for the Aquarius is in the store. Again, these are all the last of these. I'm not making no more. I have another 15 of Arcadian over here. You can't see it, so I don't know why I'm pointing at them. Um, I'm just waiting for new sleeves to come in. Those will be the last 15 that will go out. They're going to have a new design sleeve. And all the, all the games that are in the store right now have the new cartridges design, the new cartridge design except for Aquarius. Aquarius has its own cartridge. Um, any of the ClickAways ones have the new cartridge design. They have the foam insert. They have the new hard box. All of them have the new hard box and the foam insert. Um, they have all have the wraparound sleeve. They're all shrink wrapped. I have seven copies of Crazy Chicky Jr. left. It's the same thing as the others. The only difference between Crazy Chicky Jr. and the rest is Crazy Chicky Jr. still has the black box, so it's about a half inch taller than the others. But other than that, it's, it's got the new cartridge, the new the sleeve, everything. Um, we have a new game coming out. I'll get to that in a bit because I I'll do that when I get done here. Shows coming up. Korgs, Columbus, Ohio, Retro Game System Service, whatever, Club. <laughs> Korgs is happening on, on May 13th, Columbus, Ohio. 
Go on, my, go on 8bitmillygames.com, click on support games and expos. You'll see it there, we'll be there. We'll have a nice big display set up. Um, after that is, uh, I always mess up on how to say it. Uh, CCAG, Cleveland Classic Arcade Games, Arcade Classic, it's something like that. Um, that is in July. Again, it's on the link on the page. Um, we're hopefully going to PGX in September. I have yet to hear back from them, and I'm starting to run out of my patience waiting for them. I've never heard of applying to become a vendor at a game at a show. I didn't apply last year. I just paid and went. So if they don't want my $400 for the booth, then I just don't go to it. And then we have Torgs in November, which I am looking forward to that. That's a two-day show. Um, I will not be doing Game Cleveland this year, um, as many of you know. I have mentioned before. Um, I was very disappointed with the show. I stared at a wall all day. Um, it was more laid out for board games, Pokemon cards, things like that. At least from what I was able to see from my wall vantage point. Um, so that's things I got going there. Do, 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 do. What else we got going here? I'm just teasing the last piece I'm going to get to here. Um, I don't think I have anything else left in here that I need to talk about in the room here. No, we're good on that right now. One more game coming out. You may or may not see me tease it. We are doing a test run. We are distributing a game called Tunnels of Terror. It is for the Odyssey 2. It was written by a company. Well, it was written by a Chris Reed. And it's been published by Odyssey Brazil. And we are the exclusive US and Canadian publisher of the game. It is very similar to Turmoil 2022, which is similar to Turmoil for the 2600. So it kind of fits in with what we have going there. Um, that is available. Pre-orders are available on our website, 8bitmillygames.com. They should be shipping before the end of May, if not sooner. I'm supposed to be getting some sent to me soon. So once I get them, I can start shipping them out. We're doing very well in the pre-orders. I'm ordering a very limited run. So if you're a procrastinator and you just want to wait and see what happens, you may wait too long. And next thing you know, you don't get the game. So I would suggest you get there and order it if you have an Odyssey 2 and want to get a new game. And I just wanted to, I just wanted to, I'm going to lean here for a second. I just wanted to address a couple of points that have been brought up on Facebook concerning the pricing. Right now, the game is sixty-five dollars. I'm gonna—I'm point blank. I don't keep anything hidden. I hit the microphone. Sorry about that. I'm point blank. I'm not gonna keep anything hidden from you. I'm paying forty dollars a game plus shipping to the United States. After shipping, it's probably forty-five to forty-nine dollars per game. That leaves me fifty. That leaves me twenty, fifteen to twenty dollars, sixteen to twenty dollars. That's going in my pocket if I sell the game. If I don't sell the game, I'm out. So my profit margin is very, very slim on this. I am doing this just to see what happens. I want to test this market, see if there is an actual market out there. There are a number of other games I may be able to import in. I may even be able to get some where I can construct them locally and then I can sell them cheaper. So maybe I can work with Odyssey Brazil and I don't know if I'm supposed to say Odyssey 2. I'm just going to say Odyssey Brazil. Maybe I can work with Odyssey Brazil and some of the games that they have published in the past. Maybe I can republish them here in the United States and then I would do all of the construction here in the U.S. And if I do that, then I can have a little leeway with the price. But since people complaining, $65, too much for a homebrew game. Okay, well, if, if you're in the ColecoVision scene, 65 is about right. And if you're in the Intellivision scene, $65 is damn cheap. So, Odyssey 2, 65 may seem a little high for you. But, I just want to point this out. This is the United States. This landed in the U.S. If, and this is a big if, because you can't order this game right now because I have the U.S. distribution. If I didn't have the U.S. distribution of this game and you decided you wanted to buy it directly from Odyssey Brazil and you went on their website and you ordered it and he's selling it for between $40 and $45 U.S. After you're shipping, you're paying more. So the people that complain $65 is too much for a homebrew game, I just want to point this out to you. We are looking at a market where the number of games getting produced for a system is three digits max, 100. Maybe more, maybe less, but about 100 games. With my Turmoil game for the Aquarius, I made six, uh, 66 of them. That's it. 
This is not hundreds of games. The market is so small. These are almost made to order individual games per person. It's like going to a store. You go into a store and this guy has 10 paintings on the wall he just painted of, I don't know, a bridge. He painted a bridge and he's selling them. And he wants $500 a piece for the paintings. Each one he painted himself. And you're like, $500 for a bridge painting? That's awfully expensive, man. Why can't you sell it for cheaper? Because these are only bridge paintings you can get. These are the only Odyssey 2 games, brand new, you can buy right now. Or any other ones. ColecoVisions, Intellivisions, Atari 2600s, the games that Homebrewers made. These are the only ones that you can buy right now. Yo, yeah, you can go buy some old things. If you want to go, if you want to look, I'm going to use ColecoVision because that's what I predominantly work with. If you decide that, I don't want to pay $65 for... Desolator? That's awfully expensive. I'm going to go pay $5 for Donkey Kong. As I said before, a long time ago, about the entity, good for you. You want a cookie? Prices go up. We have costs. I've done this. This is probably the third time I brought this up. I mean, I've done a whole spiel on the cost of being a home brewer. And then I have talked about it more before. I now can get my cost per game to make $20 out of my pocket per game. That's it. That's that's material cost. That's box, sleeve, shrink wrapping, foam insert, manual, cartridge shell, label, PCB, EEPROM, support chips. That is the co cost of materials. Then if I was just being pay, if I was paying somebody by the hour to make these games, it's going to take. And this this isn't coding. This is just assembling. It would take them a half hour to forty five minutes to completely assemble each game. If you do it individu individually, if you take and solder the ROM and the support chips into the PCB, put them into the cartridge, close the cartridge up. And this doesn't count all the testing. You test the chip before, you gotta burn the EEPROM first. Burn the EEPROM, test the chip. Solder the PCBs, test the PCB. Put it in the cartridge, test the cartridge. Put a label on it. Okay, cartridge is now done. Fold the box, set that to the side. Cut the foam insert, set that to the side. Take the manual, slice them, staple them, set that to the side. Take the sleeve, fold the sleeve, glue the sleeve, glue the sleeve, reattach the sleeve, let it dry, set it to the side. Reassemble everything. Put the cartridge in the box. Put everything else in the box. The manual and any other goodies that go in there. Close the box up. Put the put the sleeve on it. Shrink wrap it. Now you have a finished box. Half hour, forty five minutes per box. If you do them in a bulk, when I when I'm making, if I do cartridges, I usually do like fifty cartridges at a time. I build them, and it takes me two days to go from burning, assembling, and everything. Two days worth of time of my time. Not a minimum wager that we're paying here in Pennsylvania. I'm in Ohio now. I'm not sure what Ohio is. Pennsylvania is where I live across the border. Seven seventy-five an hour minimum wage. So even if I was paying a minimum wager of that, I'm looking at what? I'm looking at what? Let's just say $8. Make it even for me. $6,428 for two days worth of work for them to assemble those things. So that's got to come off the price. $20 per box. I did, did 50 of them. $20 worth of parts. Per, per game complete I did 50 if I did 50 of them that's a thousand dollars plus hundred and twenty eight dollars for the cost of the person doing it. that's eleven hundred and twenty eight dollars so far that's not even counting the month month and a half so with the time I spent coding the game and then I have to market it and then I have to be wary of the fact that if there's a bug later, I may have to remake all these games and send them out for free. So when someone says $65 is too much for a game, they don't understand what's involved in it. They're looking at the final product and saying it's too much for it. 65 bucks is too much for it. Is it really? Could you produce it? Could you sit down and produce this whole thing from scratch? Write the whole game, create the game, package the game, market the game. Could you do that one off for 65 bucks? Now, I will give this because there are people out there. There are people that like to code these games just for the love of coding. 
I applaud them. I used to do that all the time. When I was working a normal job, working with somebody else, when I was in, in the restaurant business, when I was working managing restaurants, that's what I used to do. I'd get up at four o'clock in the morning and I'd code from four o'clock to seven o'clock and then go to work. Come home at night, my computer was sitting in the living room. And while my kids are running around playing and my wife is watching TV, I'm coding some more because just for the love of coding. You know what? I never got anything done. I never finished a freaking thing because I never was able to spend a lot of time. But that's what I did. I loved coding. So if you write games just for the love of coding, well then, I applaud you. And if you want to sell it for five bucks, I applaud you again. <laughs> if you're giving it away as a digital game, yeah, five bucks is fine. You're selling on cassette, well, five bucks, eh. You're really undercutting yourself because after parts and everything else, you might be making two bucks a game. If that. You really think your time and effort's worth that? And again, it's the love of the game. So I'm going to do it just for that. But, as I said a number of times, the people that complain that $65 or $50 or $40, I mean, wh where, where is your, this is an okay amount for me to pay. Are you down, are you, these people that complain that $65 is too much for a game, are they at the point where $15 is a great price for them? Are they one of those ones that say, I can buy an awesome copy of Doom on my phone for 99 cents. Why would I pay for that? You can't compare the two. Here's your comparison. It's like comparing a hand-built car. Well, I won't use car. Car's too complicated. A hand-built bicycle to a motorcycle. This hand-built bicycle is going to cost you a lot more because there's a lot, a lot involved in it. And then there's a one-off or a ten-off or maybe a hundred-off if you're lucky. This motorcycle over here, on the other hand, they made a hundred thousand of them. So... Just to finish this off here, and I'm, I'm not getting upset about this. I just really want to stress this point, and I know make, it makes no sense because we see it coming and go. I mean, I'm reading on right, right now. People are complaining that somebody, some people are selling their items that they make for too much. If they feel it's too much, they should make them themselves. If you feel that $65 for a game is too much for a game, then you should make them yourself. And if you're really good at it, get a hold of me and I'll sell it for 65 bucks and you can make a pretty penny profit. Well, not a pretty penny. 25% at least. Ooh, a nice little payment there. So, keep in mind, when you complain it's too much, you're not really thinking about it. And if you do think about it and you still think that 65 is too much, well, maybe you're in the wrong collection. Maybe you shouldn't be collecting games for these old systems, 40-year-old computers or 40-year-old game systems. Maybe you shouldn't be in that. Maybe you should be buying games for your iPhone or buying games on Steam for your PC or get a PS5. Anywho, my little homage to Andy Rooney. Have a good day.